Hello, Mark Brad Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Don Gleason from San Antonio, Texas. How are you doing today, Don? Uh, I'm doing good. As we said in the green room, it's hot. It's going to be 106 here today, so it's uh, it's hot and windy. Wow. But we're we're making through it. That's good. So, are you are you a native to to Texas? Oh no, I'm from Wisconsin. Born in Michigan, raised in Wisconsin, so I'm used to the cold weather and uh, okay. usually. It's very rare we get something like this up there. You know, maybe every oh, three to five years. So you no. only get a couple couple of weeks of real hot, muggy weather up there. So it's usually that pretty kind nice. of weather. So what yeah. brought you down to Texas? When I retired in 2009, um, I was looking for companies that would do management consulting back to the Air Force. And Booz Allen Hamilton ended up being that company, and they had an office right here. The Air Force, at the time, Air Force Center for, how was it, Air Force Civil Engineer Center was here in San Antonio. Now they've got uh, an east and a west. And, uh, oh, so really? We, I came down here to San Antonio. We were doing a lot of work for the Air Force Civil Engineer Center, uh, particularly emergency management. Environmental was my forte. So it, it was okay, perfect. Okay, that's cool. So, okay, what do you do in San Antonio now? You know, one thing, I uh, when I retired um, in 2009, I had a great connection for nine years with Booz Allen Hamilton. And uh, I had a I stayed for nine years. And, you know, on average, military leave their first post-military job at a rate of 45% within the first 12 months. Wow. So one out of, almost one out of two switch in that first year. Unbelievable. I stayed with Booz Allen for nine years. And I had a great transition. I really thought long and hard about it for, you know, I, I joke sometimes it was 24 years I was planning to get out because when I got sure, in in really? 1980. When, in okay. 1982, I, I only expected to stay for four years. And I almost got out at four, almost got out at seven, almost got out at 10, almost got out at 20. Uh -huh. so I, was always, I was always thinking about what I wanted to do. And I think that paid a lot of benefits because I, I knew what I wanted I to do. But today, with uh, one out of two, you know, changing jobs in that first year, I'm finding as I talk to folks, they're not really spending the time to plan their transition, their career transition. And okay, uh, so really. that's, that's what I do is I, my, I'm just driven to try to help them in that uh, process to find the right, I, I'm gonna, I say it this way, to find the job that energizes them and the life that fulfills them. Because it's Amen. two parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, so how do, I mean, how do people get a hold of you or how do they find, do you just do it right down in San Antonio or do you do. work? You most, just do it in most, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Most of what I do is virtual. I'm, I'm building out the program. I just was leading a, a, a nonprofit the last three years helping military, and I resigned from that in March, so I'm revamping my website. The best way for people to find me is through LinkedIn, and okay. my name there is Don, middle initial L, and then Gleason. So Don L. Gleason. I'm the only one. Okay. And, uh, so you can get right to me and just send a connect note. Say, hey, I heard you on the Dreamcatcher podcast. And, there you uh, go. Wanna, awesome. Want to we'll connect put, with you and, and see how we can talk. We'll put the links in the, the, the show notes. But so, okay, I know we were talking earlier. You were talking about the, the suicide rate for people yes. in the military. Yeah. So once you become a commander in the military and a supervisor, and I commanded at squadron level three times and at the group level one time, and you start wow. to really – care about the people. I mean, it's not that you don't care about them, but you, sure. you're so, you, you spend so much time as a commander helping people that uh, you're, you're kind of stuck on that habit for, for life. And I see, uh, this is a, this is a uh, disturbing statistic, 22 military and veterans committing suicide every day. Now, there's some that people say it's 17, terrible. some people say it's 27, but it's somewhere in that area. A lot, way of, too many. A lot of people, oh yeah, by yeah. long ways, yes. And uh, the number one ideation for suicide is career transition. And there's a lot to that, right? Mindset. We, yep. What do we do when, we, uh, when we're in the military? We're focused on the mission, something bigger True. than ourselves. It's not about profit. It's not about self. It's about the mission. You come out of the, you get into corporate, people feel like it's all about profit. They feel it's kind of backbiting. It's not, mm -hmm. it's, it, most people are, it's about them. Um, right. So, so it's a different mindset. In the military, we call contractors blood-sucking contractors and, oh, really? and, okay. uh, and belt, beltway bandits. And now all of a sudden we're joining them. So oh. it's a mindset shift. So there's a lot of things one. going on inside there. Plus, people aren't spending the time trying to think, what do I really want to do next? Yeah, so they jump out you... and they just try things. And that leads to job after job after job. And after, as you start 
you're changing jobs, it starts to, to wear on you a little bit. And I you start to think, maybe that. I'm not worthy of this, right? Maybe I'm an imposter. You probably heard of imposter oh, syndrome. Oh, yeah, imposter syndrome. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So there's a I, lot of things going on in there. And it, it takes, uh, it's kind of like it takes a village. It takes a community to help people through that process. So, okay, how did you start? I mean, I know you're, you're coaching. How did you get to be the coach to do this? So I, I became certified as a coach back in 2015. Okay. I, uh, I saw an ad on uh, Facebook for the John Maxwell team at the time. Now it's Maxwell Leadership Team. They've, they've rebranded. But I talked to them uh, Thanksgiving weekend in 2014. I explored the whole program. And uh, I had always thought when I was on planes and I was reading some of these magazines in American Airlines and Delta that maybe mm -hmm. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, have my own company someday. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. My, my brother, older brother, I'm the youngest of three. Okay. He, he was an entrepreneur, had his own company. So I was kind cool. of encouraged and uh, intrigued by that. So then when I got uh, certified, I realized what I could do. And I just found when I was doing the, the coaching, it just lit me up. Yeah. To, to be able to sit there and talk to somebody and help them get from where they're at to where they want to be, right? Create that plan, yep. help them execute it. I walked, I would float down the stairs sometimes. My wife would be downstairs <laughs> and, I'd, I'd, and I'd just float down the stairs. It's like, that was so much fun. Cause that it's is so, so awesome. And impactful. Uh -huh. yeah. You were definitely in flow. You're right, definitely right. at the right place. Very, definitely very much. Flow, yep. Okay, so how many people do you work with at a time or does that vary? Oh, it varies. Um, the last three years, we were we actually had 97 people go through our program and another 50 wow. that we were working with when I left. So uh, I'm cool. rebuilding, rebuilding that. I'm probably supporting right now about 12. That's still, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot. So yeah. um, how long you work with them? Does that vary by the situation or do you have a certain set time? It does. It, it varies uh, by the person. So it depends on where they're at in the process and what I need to help them with. Some people okay. are very clear on what they want, and all they need to do is fine-tune their resume and LinkedIn. Some people haven't got a clue at all what they want to do, yeah. and we, so we, we start way back yeah. to, you know, what are your skills, <clears throat> what are your interests, what are your passions? I just had coffee with a gentleman this morning, and we went uh -huh. back to the thing I always go to, which is, what was your best experience? And what's the, the, the yeah, job or the task, the project that really excited you, and why? Uh -huh. what, was it, what was it about it? And uh, once I can dig into that and find that component, we can usually rebuild to something that they were looking for. Here's a perfect example. Oh. Uh, years ago, I was working with a sergeant major in the Army. I said, so okay. what, what got you in the Army? He goes, oh, that was easy. I was from Alabama. Uh, he's, he happened to be black. He said, there's nothing in Alabama for me except drugs and alcohol wow. and crime. And I did not want to be part of that. So I joined the army, and I made, made sergeant major. I said, so we talked for a while. I said, so what was the uh -huh. best experience? He goes, oh, that's easy. He said, I was in D.C., and I got to be the host for the USA Olympic basketball dream team oh, coming wow. to D.C., oh. and, uh, and we arranged with the schools to uh -huh. send their, to these kids up and hear the basketball players. And he said, to see the kids' eyes light up when they realize yeah. that you know, because this was David Robinson, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, right, all of those right, guys. Yeah. And, he, oh. and he said, you could see the kids' eyes light up when they realized that these guys came from the same poverty that I'm in today. They yeah. made it out. I can make it Give out. Give them hope. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's starting to think about how do I help these kids get that dream? Kind of like what I'm doing, right? It's a dream. Well, like exactly. you're dream catching, right? It's, yeah, it's not, it is. You know, because uh, most people don't catch their dreams; they can't, they they that's live right. their fears. They, that's what they do. Yeah. So, so yeah. do you, um, do you have women that you coach too? Probably yep. male men and women. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, some some people come out of the civil engineer community like I did. Some are uh, all different services. Um, some are all different career fields. So, okay. uh, it, it, but it's the same kind of process. Even if you're outside the military, it's kind of the same kind of process. Figure out what you really want to do, network okay. to validate that. And, and make connections within the companies. 75% of all jobs are made through your network. They're not made from just submitting That's an application. Yeah. Really and interesting. They, and, and then we work on really helping them sell themselves because most people do a terrible job at writing about themselves, writing a resume, a bullet that articulates I, what their value is. I would, I would never <laughs> thought about that, but I could definitely see that. Um, yeah, we were. Um, I could definitely see people don't, 
Well, you talked about imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, mm-hmm. I've said for, for that myself, don't think that that's, you know, they're worthy of that. You know, it's just like, that mm-hmm. can't be me. So they're not going to put, not to put that on their resume very well. So, um, that's right. so, that's right. so, so here's, a, if, if I could, here's an example. Oh, yes. So, so I was talking to a, a young Navy E6. Okay. Uh, Corman. He'd been on a ship, not an aircraft carrier, but a smaller ship, logistics uh, support ship. And uh, his bullet was responsible for maintenance and repair of all equipment on the ship. Wow. Okay. It's a job description bullet, right? It, it didn't have the amount of the amount of the value of the equipment. It didn't talk about his capabilities of managing it. It just said, I'm responsible for it. So we started talking about it. And long story short, I said, tell me a little bit about it. And we got down to this. The day he came on board, all the forklifts were down. It was costing oh, him 70, wow. 75 people a day for six hours to haul logistics by hand around the ship. And oh, wow. For six months. The captain was getting pretty upset. All right, so, I, I'm rightly so. <laughs> yeah. So the, the forklifts, um, they did not have manuals to fix them. They were, they, wow. the, uh, parts, the parts were no longer in uh, manufacture. So what he did, this is his thinking ability, he reached back to people in the States and he found somebody who had a manual that he could read to figure out what was wrong. And then he reached back to companies to figure out what suitable substitute parts he could use. And he got them delivered to the ship. They weren't even, they weren't even sitting in port. They were out to sea. So he got them delivered to the ship and he did it all within two weeks. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) So now, so now you build a bullet like that, right? Faced with this, I did this. Here's the results. Interesting. Oh, that, I, yeah. that speaks to a company of, wow, if he can do that for you, for them, I, he can do that for us. Yeah, that is very cool because most people would not write it that way. That's for sure. That's so, right. I mean, that's that right. is – so, okay, it, it's you. Are, are there other people in your job, your business or – so I've really built it as a family business in some respects. It's uh, it's, it's awesome. ebb and flow based upon my kids and what they're going on to. But uh, my, my wife does the finances. My daughter helps with marketing. My older son helps me with uh, editing and English. <clears throat> um, okay. I, I came through that time in, in America where we didn't learn all the pronouns, nouns, adjectives. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> so he's really good at it. And then my second son is a, is a um, graphic designer. So he's helped me with my logo and some other Perfect. things. Perfect. <laughs> it really works out. Perfect. So. Yeah. So okay, I gotta ask you since it's Dreamcatcher, what did you? What was your dream when you were a kid? Uh, I love it. Um, this was interesting. I, I find I'm one of the few that knew so early, and I, and I may be wrong, but that's what I've been finding. Okay. In fifth in fifth grade, I was uh, it was April twentieth of nineteen seventy, and it was the first Earth Day in America. <clears throat> one okay. of our senators from Wisconsin. Uh, oh wow. Was a, was a sponsor behind the program. So it was big in Wisconsin. The schools oh, really bet, supported yeah. it. And, uh, and I caught fire on that day to take care of the environment. Now, the background is <clears throat> my dad had been taking us out fishing. He loved to fish. So we'd okay. get on lakes and streams and, and rivers, <clears throat> and, and I would see the the yellow foam on the water and I would smell oh, the pungent yep. smell right, yep. where you just turned your stomach and I could see the dead fish. And I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing to the waters that have been given to us to be stewards for? Yes. So then I started learning more and more about the companies and the cities and how they were you know, dumping effluent from plants and, and stuff into the streams. And now that was yep. about the time in 1970 when it was the big environmental movement. I don't know why we had the Earth Day, right? So oh, yeah. we, took, we took lead out of the fuel. We instituted effluent standards for wastewater treatment plants. We got on top of companies for what they were discharging. But so I, I got to learn through that. I was really good at math and science, got my bachelor's in civil and environmental engineering, emphasis okay. on the environmental piece, and uh, it just lit me up. I wanted to clean America's waters was my mantra. And oh, uh, un- unfortunately, awesome. in 1982, um, there was a big recession going on, and unemployment yep. was 18%. Interest rates were 18%. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's neat to see your money growing that fast, but you weren't keeping up with inflation. So No, not even <laughs> it close. Was tough. No, but, that isn't. Uh, I, got, I got in the service, and I got to do some really, really, really cool things. And I, I, I went back home to Wisconsin, and I talked to some of my friends out of high school, and they're like, uh-huh. I'm, not doing, I'm not doing anything like that. Uh-huh. So I was really excited about what I got to do. I mean, one time, they found uh, World War II chemical test kits buried on the northern side of the base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Wow. And, I, and uh, these were small things, but they were live nerve agent, live... Uh, Unbelievable. Uh, 
uh, tear gas. So we called in a team out of uh, the Army team out of New Jersey. I can't remember the base now. And uh, I got to be their point of contact. And I had the relationship with the state. And uh, because I had built a trust relationship with the state environmental folks, <clears throat> I talked to the wing commander and said, sir, we got to let them know. And he goes, right, yeah. The relationship. He says, you go down there and talk to them. So I did. And I, I told him about it told the state about it and they said hey Don we know that you have a tight program you're always doing the right thing we trust you just keep us informed you know there was other wow. places where they would have been lot. all over the, they would have been all over the base and they oh, yeah. to watch the whole thing and yep. they would have wanted yep. to direct it but they trusted us so that um, says a lot you. that sounds really yeah. a lot that is right. so I mean wow I, I, that is so neat but okay yeah. so um, I see I was looking at your website achieve new heights that's your website mm -hmm. then that is my website. That's the one that's okay. being revamped now that I've, I'm, you know, rebuilding my program. But mm -hmm. okay, so okay, so where do you see the your program in five to ten years? I mean, what would you like to see it grow into? So what I want to be able to do is to help people in different ways. Uh, I want to help them uh, have on-demand courses where they can okay. learn some of the things. You know, when I talked about those three phases, right? Figure out what you want to do, network, sell your value. They don't right. have to wait on me to do a one-on-one -on -one call. They can listen to on-demand courses and progress at their own speed. That's that's the first thing I want to do. Second thing is I want to do a, a call every week and people okay. can jump on and find out where they're at and they can ask questions so that we can nice. answer those to keep them moving forward. And then at key audit points, I want to get on a one-on-one -on -one call with them and uh, just make sure nice. they're moving in the right direction. You know, and they, no. they don't they don't fear um, asking questions in the in the public. You know, for, like in a, in a public call. They're going to sure, people are right, going to hold right, back. Yes. <clears throat> people are going to hold back, but one on one, they'll ask those questions, and I can ask them the right questions, and we can we can keep them moving. Very nice. So, 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 do you have a podcast yourself, or will you have a podcast? Is that something you'd want to do? I have been thinking about it, but I am not there yet. Okay. So well, I'm, uh, I am takes... thinking of I'm thinking of something. To, I think this mastermind idea, yeah, will will kind of move into something like that. Uh, I'm still okay. still working through exactly how we want to do it. But the cool. core right now is I'm working right now I'm working with everybody one on one. I'm trading okay. time for money. It's the way they say it, and I want to uh, well, to move that a little bit in a different direction, so I that people are waiting on me with you know with my busy schedule, so they can yeah. they can so move can forward to those on demand and, courses. Yeah. Yep. So uh, okay, so did, we talked about earlier. You're writing the book now. Is that right? I'm playing around with that as well. Yeah, okay. I had I had an idea a couple of years ago, and uh, and was really excited by it. Now I'm trying to bring these different experiences that I've had the last three years into some stories and, uh, and process steps. So as I, as I, like I do those on demand courses, I've got 18 courses that I'm working through right now. Wow. And, and they'll be short. I mean, it could be five to 15, cool. five to 15 minutes. You can get through it, but it's different pieces of the process. So I want to write a book that talks about those. That is so cool. So would you ever do a satellite, you know, have a place like in Wisconsin, uh, what you do? I mean, like franchise what you're doing? I don't know about franchise, but uh, my wife and I have talked a lot about making sure that the, the life that we're building, you know, the company fits into that life. One thing we want to do is we, we love to camp. We love to bird watch. We love to hike. Uh -huh. We love to see America. We love to see the world. Yes, so, I hear you. Part of that on-demand piece is I'll be able to help people even when I'm out having fun. So, okay, so where, where, where do you like to travel to? I mean, Wisconsin probably is one of them, I'm sure. We but... try to get back to Wisconsin every couple of years for a football game and see friends. There um, you go. We, uh, we're heading out soon to Colorado, to ah. my wife's, to my brother-in-law's house. Uh, Colorado's always nice. Up in the Kansas City and uh, Nebraska area and Phoenix area, so we like to get okay. out there. And you... uh, last year, my daughter called us up and said, hey, in six weeks, this was in February, said, in six uh -huh. weeks, I can get I can get uh, cheap tickets from Houston to Estonia. Oh, wow. So we said, that would be so cool. Now, Putin was just getting ready to attack. Uh -huh. And by the time we went, Putin had attacked and people were evacuating up to all of those countries. Yeah, I bet. But, but it worked out. We were pretty safe. We didn't have any problems at all. That's and, good. Uh, the, I'm glad the you beauty, got to take a trip then. Yeah, the beauty of the people beauty of the food it was all delicious we went to a couple breweries i love drinking beer Me too. And brewing beer and brewing yeah. beer oh yeah. really do you okay that's yeah. cool yeah so then um. uh, so to see that they're you know brewing beer is brewing beer right but how they did it there a little bit different maybe a little bit different equipment mm -hmm. and uh yeah. but uh, it tasted really good 
and uh, went to some restaurants. Ended up that through the Maxwell leadership team, I had a coaching partner who had I had gotten to know, and she lived right there in Tallinn, Estonia. So oh, we wow. met her That's and her, her, even better. Yeah, her, and her, her and her partner on a Sunday. We went to the brewery, and she took us to another brewery and lunch, and, and we just got to know them. And she talked about her parents, and when when Russia nice. was you know it had invaded, yeah, and, and yep. you know, they got kicked out, and so he learned a lot about history as well. I'm I'm kind of a I wouldn't say I'm a history nut, but I am intrigued by history I am too. and how people react. Yeah. We definitely, and we need to remember our history because it definitely right. repeats itself. Oh boy, does it repeat itself. So, Amen okay. to that. Huh? Yeah. So, okay, tell us a little bit about the Maxwell Leadership Team. How did you get associated with that? Uh, I, I might have said earlier, I, I was uh, November of 14 when I saw it on Facebook. And uh, I'd always thought okay. about being a, an entrepreneur. So, I just really it was intrigued by it. Um, uh -huh. As I explored it more and I went and got certified, it just, it's a community, it's a community of believers. You don't have to believe okay. to be a part of it, but since John Maxwell is a pastor, comes from mm -hmm. a religious background, got his his, his doctorate in, in divinity, um, he naturally speaks from there. Most of his leadership, he says all of his leadership lessons came from the Bible. So Really? Uh, okay, I did not it, know it, that. It, okay. Yeah, so it's a community. Most of us are believers. Most mm -hmm. of us are servants. We love to serve and help people. Amen. Um, we have an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's fun to go back. I've been to this will probably be, I, I go in August. This will probably be my fourteenth conference. Nice. And like my my wife is always asking. She says, "Why do you go back?" And it's a I get to learn more about what right. resources I get. I get exactly to yeah. But then we spend three hours a day helping the other people. You know. Um, oh wow. Get 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 instituted into the program help answer questions we used to run masterminds and show how, show them how to do a mastermind we would run the leadership game and show them how to do that so very nice actually, teaching and helping and it it brings back the cost of the program because we're all volunteers so they don't have okay. to hire people to do that, see that, that be kind win -win. of stuff okay yeah, so and they, they, no. they, they, then they give me money off of my registration. So that works too. That that is definitely a lot of wins there. So I, I I did not know that's how it worked. I've heard of that for years, but I did not yeah. know that that's the way it worked. That's I like yeah. the way that is. So we haven't that, gotten your wife to go back there to no, join she's you. She's not interested. She's not, not interested. <laughs> nope. Yeah. No, I think that tricked uh, my wife too. So yeah. um, how about your kids? What's, what's What's neat is uh, my daughter has done a lot of leadership training through her company and she's read a lot of Maxwell but she's not interested in getting certified she's okay. probably the most okay. interested but uh, I was going to say one thing that we get to use is Maxwell's material so at the basic level we Worth get six books that are kind of the foundational books at the second level mentorship level not only do we get calls every week in every area right we learn about business development leadership right coaching speaking and then personal development so we have every day of the week is a different opportunity to talk to the mentors and then uh, and you get Q&A so you get to you know you can get on there and say hey so Chris Robinson who's our executive vice president over the whole program he's on Monday okay. morning at seven o'clock central and wow. we get on and say Chris I'm talking to a company about this and I'm running into this kind of problem you know here's the situation this is what I'm thinking do you have any advice for me nice they will, they will help us through all of those different pieces so that we can grow our business that is worth so and, much yeah. Wow, that is definitely so, a great deal. So at the mentorship level, you get that plus another 14 books. And then at the Whoa. senior the executive director level where I'm at, you get a, open to a whole lot of corporate resource materials that you can use. So you Very really nice. get a lot of value for it. No, I mean, that is – so do you go to, like, conferences besides John Maxwell to learn more about other people's programs or just basically uh, kind of John Maxwell's? Um, so I'm a I'm a fan of Dave Ramsey. I've not been okay. to his entree yeah. leadership, but I have studied his book and I listened to his podcast. Yes, I'm a uh, big into Simon Sinek. Oh I yeah, really? Zig, Zig, Zig Ziglar. I love his books and yep. his videos. Yep. Um, I just went to a Grant Cardone conference in February. Ah. Yep. Actually, I, yep. I won that one all expense paid VIP trip, so that was kind well, of that, fun. That's, that's nice. That's yeah. always good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, more from a that was more from a business perspective, which was really good. He talked about reverse engineering into your goals, and so that you figure out you know exactly what you have to do every day to be able to achieve that that With goal. Down the X and everything, yeah. So, X, yeah. 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 No, I've yeah. seen him in Vegas one time. So yes, that's that's uh, where we were in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. A, that's pretty much every time I've gone to see somebody, it's been in Vegas. Which yeah, um, yeah Vegas is mm -hmm. Vegas is Vegas. So that's right. um, no. So, okay, um, 
So what's what's next? What what else would you like to do? You know, I mean, we so talked we, about traveling and building, and yeah. so what other things would you like to do that you haven't done? Some, some greens 60, that are still out there. Yeah, I'll be sixty four. Okay. Um, here in about two months, I think I'm on the right path. I mean, it's it's travel. I think so too. It's uh, be time with my kids and the grandkids. I uh, I work hard to stay in shape so that I Very can important. get out get out and, you know play frisbee golf or just go out in the front yard and play play football throw the football with the grandson and mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, and those kind that. of things mm -hmm. and, uh, i'm learning about playing with dolls with the two granddaughters that's, i bet that's, that's a, true too yeah that's important that's a new experience <laughs> yeah. but it's just, it's just spending time with them and uh, and getting to know them and so you know, adding important. advice that you can steer them in the right direction it takes a community right it does and uh, so and, uh, i think that's a big part of it but uh continuing yeah. to enjoy we're we're on a uh, quest to see the Detroit Tigers. I'm a big Detroit Tiger fan. Okay. I want to see them in every major league stadium. Oh, and, wow. Uh, That's a cool quest. I like that. Yeah. Last year we got 14. No, we got the 14th one in uh, Arizona, Phoenix. Okay. We also got the fifth one in Cle 15th one in Cleveland. And this year we're going to get 16, 17, and 18 in California. As nice. The Tigers, go th Tigers go through in September. Wow, so, I love that quest. That is so cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got so. this figured out. I mean, your your yeah. life sounds awesome. And then family, mm -hmm. family is what it's all about too. Mm -hmm. So um, right. yeah. that is so, especially when you get to work with your family, that is definitely <laughs> cool. So, yeah. so Don, is there anything else that that you do that you would like to tell the guests today? Ooh, other things I do. Um, I've been uh, directing a leadership lab for the last four years. Okay. Helping, uh, helping architect, engineer, construction companies, the emerging leaders, learn about leadership. So nice. we go through a number of books and videos, and we do some leadership uh, opportunities in the field. We take a, go out to the ropes course. There's nothing okay. better. You know, the toughest person to lead is ourself, right? Uh, we, I would agree. We all, have, we all have fears and resistance. And I, I'm six foot five, and I do not like heights. So oh, really? when, you okay. climb, when you climb to the top of a 30 foot pole and you stand on top of it and you jump, now you're all tied off and everything, right? So you can't right, like fall, right. fall, but just the fact of being up there and you're standing there and you jump out to a trapeze rope. And uh, first time I went up, my heart was pumping in my I, I feel yep, it. I can understand I that. Feel it in my uh -huh. throat. I could almost taste blood. It's just like uh -huh. my heart's my heart's just beating like crazy, and I'm just like, but I'd gotten up there and I said, I am not gonna let these people see me scared. Yeah. Yep. I climbed right up and I jumped, and I, I happened to go up then a, a forty foot pole. Oh and wow. To, to a uh, now there was a platform up there. Okay. And it was for a uh, what do they call it? Like not a trapeze, but a uh, oh, like zip high wire? Oh, zip, oh, zip line. line. Okay. Yeah. So I'm standing up there talking to her, and she says, "You don't seem to be scared at all." I said, "Oh, you wouldn't believe how scared I am right now." <laughs> She's like, "You're not showing it." I said, "I said I was not going to show it." I, and I admitted later on to everybody. I said how scared I was. I said, "But you know, because it, it, for me it was a leadership lesson for them. Yep, right? Exactly. Every one of us was scared in a different way. Yep. Some people, some people wouldn't go up. Some people got part way up and came down. You know, and I tried to show them." You can conquer fear. Yeah, and, you were being the leader and, there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you were and, definitely. But then, but then being open and vulnerable and saying, "Hey, it's not like yep. I'm not scared. Yeah, you know, it's just we gotta we gotta capture it and we gotta move forward." Just like when you're in the in work and you've never led a team before, yeah. project team. If you're a project yep. manager or whatever, right? And uh, and you don't know what to do, you ask the right questions, you develop a plan, and you move on on it. And it's not gonna be perfect. Don't worry nope. about being perfect. You know, some yep. people when they jumped to that trapeze, they missed it. Some people, when they stood up, it wasn't the right thing, and they came back down. But yeah. you tried it. You advanced farther every time. It's the only you way to do keep, it. Keep trying. So yep. there was a lot of leadership lessons there. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and like they were saying, do it afraid. And, you know, I right. thought that always was a kind of a corny saying when I was younger. Um, nope. <laughs> it's not. It's just, There's a lot of times you have to do stuff afraid. Uh, That's right. No, and build your. It's like they say, build your wings on the way down, right? Exactly. You, you, and it, that, that is very, very true. <laughs> It is. Yes. I mean, it's just There's, like, because everybody's like, well, you don't ever seem like you're afraid. It's like, well, that would be wrong. That's right. <laughs> so, but I mean, yeah. even doing the There's, first few podcasts, it was d definitely intimidating. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's just like, well, the only way you get better is to do it. Like you just said, right. you know, it's the only that way. Maybe you... That may be what's holding me back from doing a podcast. I don't know. I don't know if it's the time requirement, uh, yeah. not knowing how to do it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it, it hasn't reached the top of 
Yeah, the, and the you, pile of things, and you and you got to prioritize, right? So you I do, do yeah. I can do that, but I it's probably I can't do it all. Yeah, so I've, I've got to take them off thin. in chunks and priority. Yeah. Yep, yep. You just can't. You got to definitely, like you say, prioritize. Here's, or you go ahead. Here's here's a key thing. So when I work, in fact, I'm doing a talk on Thursday night to military entrepreneurs, and I'm going to use Michael E. Gerber's book, E Myth okay. Revisited. Uh huh. And he talks in the back of the book. He says the first thing you got to do. And I think this applies to people getting out of the service as well, right. even taking a corporate job. First thing you got to do is define the life you want to have. Yes. And then you figure out the business you're going to get into that fits into that life. Yep. Yep. And too often we do it reversed. We we yeah. we, we jump out shouldn't. and we get into we want to start a company. We don't really know what we want to do. Then pretty soon we're working 60, 80 hours a week. And then we start having marital problems and kid problems yep. and health problems, yep. right? We, we no longer have hobbies. We're not getting to the gym. We're not taking, we're not eating yep, right. Exactly. I, I, I see some of my peers who've gained 60 pounds, 80 pounds. Oh, wow. Wow. You know? So, and, and they, they, uh, they talk that they've got a problem, but I haven't seen them. No action. They're, they're, they're liking that money and, and yep. the life that they're in, but it's not the life that they wanted. Yeah. I think it's and the same thing when you get out of the service shame. and take a corporate job. What, what kind of, life do you want now how do you fit it in so i'm yeah, looking that's... for a job that still allows me to travel yep. to spend yep. time with you know the family to do the bird watching and hiking to, to be at the gym every morning at five i still get up at 10 minutes to five every morning and, and go to the gym I'm with you i'm a morning person yeah. i love morning yeah. so yeah. so so you but gotta define what you want you do because otherwise you will you will recreate what you had and that's what you don't want yeah and like you say <laughs> most people do that you know, it's just like, in fact, I have people talk to me because I like to do the travel and all the other stuff. And they want me to grind. And it's like, yeah. why would I ever want to do that? Uh, for one thing, maybe if you're making coffee, you can use the word grind, you know, grind some coffee beans or something. But it's just mm -hmm. like, That's right. if if you're doing that, you might as well, might as well be working for somebody else rather than That's doing right. your own. I mean, it's That's just right. like, no, I do it exactly like you said. <laughs> I want to do this. It's my non-negotiables. I'm going mm -hmm. to do this. This is the way it's going to be. Um, I, I'm part of the why. Actually, I help the why. You know, all this all stuff right. that is that 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 has got to be done. And mm -hmm. um, people say I have it backwards. It's like, no, I think I have it right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I do that first, and then the, I do the other. So, mm -hmm. like you say, so it can support that. And yeah. they also say, so when do you work and when do you, you know, play? And it's like, it's one and the same. I don't know mm -hmm. if there's a d division between the two. It's, yeah. um, I, I go back yeah. and forth. I may work a little bit and may play a little bit. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like the Y has become kind of work and play. So, um, but yeah. The, yep. problem, the problem for me camping, at least in Texas, is there's not a lot of uh, national uh, state parks with internet. Really? <clears throat> so, yeah, not even, not even a good Wi-Fi signal. So uh, when you, That's too you go bad. to a state park, if you're going to do some work, you got to go find a Starbucks or something to find it. Wow. So well, that, then if you like Starbucks, that could be all right. right. <laughs> so, I, I'm not a coffee drinker, but they got, they got yeah. pretty darn good hot chocolate. They do. Yeah, so, they have pretty good stuff there. That would not yeah. be too bad. But that's too bad they don't have it, so you can work at the you know state park there. Yeah. So. I'm not yeah. sure Nebraska does or not on that. So um, that's one thing I've never checked in Nebraska. out. My daughter's in Nebraska. I'll have to ask her. She's doing camping right now. She just she outfitted. A... She uh, she bought a a cargo van last June. Uh -huh. She spent the last nine months. Before, she went out on in May. I'm sorry, in March. She did a six-week trip all the way through wow. California up the coast. And she oh, outfitted, cool. outfitted the, the cargo van into a camper van. Nice. And it's, it's got a nice queen size bed. It's got refrigerator, nice. water, sink, uh, a composting toilet. So she is literally off the grid. It's her and her puppy dog traveling the world. Off the grid. Is, that's the, <laughs> off I the, think I could live off the grid with what she's got there. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's something she, I think would be very yeah. fun. Yeah, so. So she's got the capability to, uh, to work. You know, three to six or yeah. whatever hours a day, just to keep up on things, and then she goes that and sees them. That is so them. nice. That is that yeah. talk about mm -hmm. catching your dream. That mm -hmm. is an awesome dream. I mean, That's that right. is, um, and I'm glad she's doing it because mm -hmm. the majority of the people say someday, and That's right. some days don't ever usually occur. So um, I told her, I told her a couple months ago. I said, you know, you are so inspiring. And she's like, what yeah. me? I said, yeah. Look what you just did. You bought it. You had a dream. 
Yep. You bought the the cargo van. Yep. You outfitted it. You didn't know certain things. So you you enlisted your uncle for electricity and your friends for this and for that and for this and for that. So it's almost a community that built it, but you were the one that was right. in the center of it. We went up last right. Labor Day and helped her build the cabinets and stuff. Nice. I'm not a cabinet maker, but we figured it out. I've done woodworking oh, before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, no. so now it's, it's kind of like a community camper. Um, oh. When she was back just recently, everybody wanted to come see it just because they hadn't oh, seen it for a while. So uh, they wanted that to hear the so stories. Cool. So I love that. Does she yeah. have a podcast or something like that? Or journal? I mean, she could have a blog or I mean, all kinds we've, of stuff. There. We've talked about that, so we'll see what happens. No, or even she a used, YouTube channel where she yeah. had her travels. Yeah. She used oh to work for the the University of Nebraska, and they kept her busy. I and bet. Now she's now she's got a uh, project management client relations type position, and okay. uh, she's Perfect. much able. She's she's. She, how do I say this? She has built the life she wants, and I think yep. she's still learning what she wants in that life. And I would, yeah, I would agree with that because it does evolve as you kind of <laughs> go along on the trip there, the journey. So, um, yeah. but yeah, that's no, one that of those is... things you asked me about. I, I, I'm toying around with a blog myself, right? That would it's be a, cool. It's a neat way to, to be a center of to build a community and make money doing that with you know, affiliate links and yep. ads and yep. and yep. Uh, so it's, it's another source of income. Yeah, you know, I, I I read a book. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Steve. Oh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, it's uh, multiple streams of income. Oh, um, I should know that one too. Yeah. Anyway, he says most of us we just have the paycheck. Yep. But you should have your paycheck. You should have stream of money from your investing and savings. You should have yep. like a side gig. You know, you could do something like a blog and have another. Stream you do. Income. So, so Especially that way, if you, have age. A, if you have another pandemic or something where it shuts something down or you get laid off, boom, you yep. still got money coming in. Yeah. Kind of a safety <laughs> net there because one, right. well, you're just, yeah, you can't hardly go with one, one income anymore in this, in this world. So plus, I That's mean, right. when you're doing that, all they get this new stuff you get to learn. And it's always never right. stop learning, which is always good. So, yeah. um, so that is so cool too. And I look forward yeah. to your blog. Do you have a name yeah. for it, or have you thought no, of a I name? Just, it was, I was in a class yesterday with Forbes Riley, who's the queen of pitch. That's her name. That's her nickname. She calls herself. And I've really okay. grown to appreciate her. The last she helped me build my pitch, and uh, so we've really been. It's been uh, an interesting course, and she's doing a course right now and called Making Money: How to Make Money. So I had thought important. about a blog before, and she put that thought back in my head. So when I'm out yeah. camping here soon, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be thinking about some things like that. You should do that. The, the I book, mean, you can. The, the yeah. book, the speaking, the blog. We'll see what happens. You could even have your own merchandise, your merch there. Yeah, yeah. You could. I mean, yeah. You can't. You cannot. Like we were talking, you can't have too many streams of income. That's for <laughs> sure. Plus, it's all a win-win. That's definitely the case. So that's, um, that's what a lot of the young generation is doing today, right? They do. And that's one thing. I, I think the young generation a lot of times gets a hard, you know, they always say they're lazy. It's like, no, they're just doing a little bit differently than we're kind of used to. That's right. Uh, exactly I mean, right. I, I think they're inspirational. I, I mean, I, 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 I learn a lot from them. That's for sure. I was, I was going to show this book, A New Kind of Diversity. Tim Elmore is a Maxwell okay. leadership thought leader. Uh -huh. And he worked, he worked with John Maxwell for a number of years, and uh, he took a look at the five generations in the workplace, okay. from the, build, the builders to the boomers to Gen X, Gen Y, uh -huh. who are millennials, Gen Z. And he looked at what causes them to think in the way they think. Uh -huh. And there's, there's technology, there's economy, there's just a lot of different factors. But when you start to think about it, you know, I now understand my kids a little bit better. They're millennials. Yeah. So, if I can get them to read this, I think they would understand me a little bit better because right. I'm a boomer. Why, uh -huh. why, why am I like I am? Exactly, you know, yeah. Yeah, just the, the example I've used lately is uh, um, my parents came through the recession and then through World War II. So mm -hmm. all about mm -hmm. scarcity of products, right? Right. And uh, so when Christmas morning comes, they taught me to pick up the Pick up the wrapping paper. Try not to rip it. Pick it up. Ha, me use too. It again. Yeah, I know and, that. <laughs> and my my kids are constantly, Dad, Dad, just just rip it out and you know, just throw it away. We'll buy more. Nope. They kind of come from the throw it away society. We came from the safe society. And neither we is did. wrong. It's just nope. they need to understand us, and we need to understand them. They do. Yeah, but, I've been but you had so many examples like that. 
That is so cool. And if you went up and, um, yep, you did, you would find saved wrapping paper in our house. Is that right? <laughs> it, yeah. Oh, yeah, you would. So, um, yep, my mom, right. did, especially my mom taught me that well. It's like, now you don't rip that. That's right. <laughs> so, no, that is so cool. But, yeah. well, Don, um, anything else? Or no, I just say if, uh, if, if anybody would like to connect with me, uh, get on LinkedIn. Don okay. L. Gleason, like we said, send me a connection note. Say that we caught you here on Dreamcatcher Podcast and would like to learn a little bit more. Let's have a conversation. And if people are, especially if they're frustrated where they're at, they want to see, you know, how they can get to that job that energizes them and the life that awesome. fulfills them. We can, I've got a number of tools we can use and we can help people through the process. But it doesn't cost anything for the conversation. Cool. So, I, so I appreciate yes. the opportunity to be here. Well, thanks for being our guest today. I mean, I appreciate you taking your time for that too. So, and, You're um, and um, maybe have you up on a follow-up podcast sometime down the line. It would that would be great if you would be willing to do that sometime. Oh, maybe always have you would got be, yeah. your blog and your, your book yeah. and all that stuff going. Yeah. And we'll, yeah. if, if that would be awesome to have you back. So um, it's so it's a, journey, it's a journey, right? It is very much a journey. <laughs> oh yeah, some days more than others. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but on that, Don, yeah. thanks for joining us, and look forward to talking to you next time. So take care. Same here. Have a good day. You too.